My name is Shannon Brooks, and I want to tell you a little bit about the neuroscience of music. Our brain and body are involved in a constant game of prediction. Our brain has certain expectations about the way the world will unfold around us, and our world is full of sensory signals, soliciting certain patterns of expectancies and uncertainties in our brains. If met with unexpected input, our brains and bodies work together to form new expectations about the world. Music provides an exceptional playground of expectations and uncertainties for both brains and bodies to exercise their predictive skills. You don't have to be a musician to have developed these expectations already. As an example, take the first few bars of Uptown Funk. The lyrics haven't even begun, but your brain is already engaging in a complex task. As you watch the music video, your brain is building an expectation of the beat that you are hearing and seeing at the same time. Your visual and auditory systems must communicate the sensory information from the video and music to your brain in training or synchronizing certain neural responses to the beat of the music and the movement of the performers. Your brain is predicting the upcoming rhythms of the song and if you find yourself dancing along, your body is participating in this prediction too. How is it though that our brains and bodies are helping us to accomplish this task of rhythmic prediction and perception? This is what I investigate in the Sensory Motor Neuroscience Lab. Specifically, I investigate how the body responds to rhythm and how the brain enables humans to perceive a musical beat. We know that the auditory system is important for processing musical rhythm. After all, we primarily experience music by listening to it, right? Well, kind of, but we also dance, exercise, and sometimes bob our heads or tap our feet as we listen to music. In essence, our musical experience often involves the simultaneous action of our bodies. I use motion capture technology to investigate how our sensory experience of musical rhythm affects spontaneous movement of our bodies. Unfortunately, this work has been put on pause due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. However, I can tell you about our brain stimulation research. For the past decade or so, neuroscience has demonstrated that motor areas of our brain are important for processing musical rhythm, even when we are sitting still. What we don't know are how each individual component of our auditory motor network contributes to rhythm perception. In my research, I use a technique called transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, to help answer this question. TMS is a form of non-invasive brain stimulation that can temporarily affect neural processing. We use a specific form of TMS that tells stimulated regions of your brain to relax for a while. This is called downregulation. We have found that when we downregulate a region of the brain's auditory motor network, called the parietal cortex, our participants have trouble perceiving certain aspects of rhythm. Interestingly, we have only observed this effect when we applied TMS to the left parietal cortex and not to the right. This indicates to us that the left hemisphere may play a dominant role in the perception of musical beat and rhythm. Now, the music that we play for our participants isn't designed to directly probe the question of rhythmic prediction, but we can use the same brain stimulation techniques with music or rhythms designed specifically to test your brain's predictive skills. The combined results from motion capture and brain simulation experiments will help to answer the question of how our brains accomplish rhythmic prediction in the playground of musical expectations.